Let me talk to you for a few minutes. I think some of you may already know that you have taken the biggest step of the rest of your life. This one step will change the way you approach life and will influence the way that you interact with your friends, your family, and everyone around you, strangers included. But what is this step? That's the real question. I think for all of us, myself included, when I first embraced Islam, I was absolutely head over heels in love. I quickly realized that I had to begin to form my life into what I could best understand was the daily practice and behavior of the companions. This was the first step in a long series of steps, but part of a blessed lifelong journey. The advice that I would give to to any new Afghani Muslim uh, in terms of what they should focus on in their first three years after having accepted the promised Messiah, strengthen your relationship with God Almighty. Come close to God Almighty and focus on Allah. I just wanted to do it for God. I just wanted to do whatever was right for God. Uh, so, so I prayed, prayed a lot. And there's a very beautiful prayer of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Allah, grant me your love and the love of those who you love and make your love more dear to me than cool running water. Adina Salat the Mustaqim, just got me down the straight path. And from that then, uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to do it for God and not for anybody else and not for any human being and not for anything like that. And I was felt comfortable and capable of doing that. So that's what it, that's what it. So that connection with Allah, once you make it, Allah will help you in every type of situation. And I think we're all witness to that. You know, we have been seen through some very difficult situations. And when we truly pray with our heart to Allah the Almighty, Allah comes and helps us. The Holy Quran mentions very clearly that it's not enough just to say, I believe in Allah. It is very important to believe in prophets and to follow them and the Khulafa. In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'oon yuhibbkum Allah. If you truly love Allah, then follow me. Then surely Allah will love you. And this emphasis on prayer is explained to us in so many ways in so many of the speeches and Friday sermons of Hazrat Khalifa to Masih. And one of the things that he impresses upon us is the fact that we have to make sure that we're in constant communion with God. हम मुसलमान हैं खुदा ताला के फैसले के मुताबिक जिसने हमारा नाम मुसलमान रखा है आज कौन सी जमात है जो बहसीय जमात अल्लाह की तरफ मशरिक में भी बुला रही है और मगरिब में भी बुला रही है शुमाल में भी बुला रही है और जनूब में भी बुला रही है Now if you think about how important this relationship is it becomes even all the more important when you think about how God himself treasures this relationship with us 
And in this relationship, this is where the miracles occur. My father, although he was born in Sialkot, but his education was done in Kanyan. His family used to be in, in Africa, in East Africa, so he had to travel to East Africa. So he said he, the boat used to leave Bombay, and he used to take a month to get to Mombasa, where he was going to go. And it was an old door, you know, the old um, sailboats right, that... Right. Uh, and uh, he was in the market looking for groceries to, to find uh, food for the journey. And he met another Muslim uh, family who were also traveling on that dhow. So they asked him if he was going to be traveling, and he said yes. And they said, are you alone? He said, yes. He said, don't worry, buy the groceries, give it to us, and we will be cooking anyway, so you can share our food with us, no problem. So he said when the journey started, they had conversations and found out that he was an Ahmadi. And they were very strange anti-Ahmadi people. And they said, really? There's absolutely no way we're going to cook any food for you. And my father had no groceries, no provisions at all. So he was uh, very perturbed. What's, how, is the, how is he going to, uh, you know, do, what is he going to do with the rest of the journey? So he father relates that suddenly there was a huge storm. And the, because of a Dao, you know, they, it, it was so bad that it, it was almost uh, certain that the boat was going to be destroyed by the storm. It was that bad. So he said, uh, I went on to the deck and I gave Azan, I said, Azan loudly, and I started to pray. So he said that, uh, as he finished the prayer, the storm ended, purely through Allah's grace. And he said the captain of the ship had been watching this. So the captain came over and said, today we are alive because of you. And from today, you're gonna to be my personal guest. And he said for the rest of the journey, it was he ate at the captain's table with the best food on the ship. Uh, and it shows how Allah helped him in a very difficult situation in that journey. Ahmadiyyat has been mentioned as a light, a source of light, the light of Allah, light of guidance, light of beneficence and kindness to the whole mankind. So this great prayer has been acquired by everyone who is a born Ahmadi or a new convert to Ahmadi, Ahmadi Islam. So every Ahmadi should always pose this question to oneself that from this source of light, what benefit I have acquired? Has my life become better, bright, illuminating and giving guidance to other people? And first of all, to myself, that is the answer which one requires to get and follow the advice in that. Having said that, there are also various ways of coming closer to God Almighty. And that's the whole purpose of religion. It is to become spiritual, to attain spirituality. Focusing on prayers, learning of the what's known as the Salat, the Islamic prayer, and learning the verses of the Holy Quran, which are recited in the prayers. So that's number one, the, the prayer. Number two, learn to recite and understand the meaning of the Holy Quran. Learn and memorize some of the key chapters of the Holy Quran, especially the last 10 surahs, the last 10 chapters of the Holy Quran. The Quran contains any kind of good. All goodness is in the Holy Quran. It should be borne in mind that we should be becoming the embodiment of the Holy Quran. I always remember that hadith where the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of God be upon him, where he said, one who does not hold anything of the Quran in his heart is like a house in ruins. I mean, whenever I thought about that particular saying, I thought to myself, oh my goodness, clearly this is a very important part of Islam. But when you really think about it, why wouldn't it be? 
This is like a letter from the creator of the universe to us human beings. Can you imagine what could be a greater miracle than that? What can be a greater blessing than that? Don't just be static. Don't just accept God Almighty and his messengers and then say, okay, that's good, that's enough for me. But actually go further than that. And the key step is to sacrifice in the cause of God Almighty. So sacrifice our time, sacrifice our wealth, sacrifice our food, which is fasting. Sacrifice everything that we have so that our soul knows deep down in our, in, our, in our hearts and our soul and we are clear with ourselves that our living and our dying, our sleeping and our waking, our eating and our drinking, our prayer and our sacrifice, everything that we have is for the sake of God Almighty. And in reality, everything that you sacrifice, this is that which you take with you after you're buried. And that's a powerful point. I mean, if you think about it, for any of us, for all of the things that we purchase and we love and we run after, all of those things, we're actually just leaving it for someone else. Because when we pass away, and everyone must pass away, then all of those things will be discussed in vibrant conversations with friends and family over who gets what, and in the end, we will just remain a picture on someone's wall or on someone's night table, and that's that. The only thing that we take with us is our sacrifice on our way to go meet our Creator. Every man and woman, even grown-up children as well, they should always get into the habit of scrutinizing oneself. And they should always think that, what was my situation yesterday? Am I better than that today or not? And what my situation is today? Am I going to move further and go to higher stages or not? So this self-analysis and self-interrogation, that is something very great in the life of everyone. I would like to read something from the writings of the Prophet Sallallahu Azur says, the purpose of their joining the movement and establishing with me the relationship like that of a disciple is that they should achieve a high degree of piety and righteousness. No wrongdoing or mischief should ever come near them. They should offer the five daily prayers regularly and with congregation and should not lie or hurt anyone by their tongues. They should not be guilty of any kind of vice and should not let even a thought of mischief, wrongdoing, or transgression pass through their minds. They should shun every type of sin, offense, undesirable speech, and action, as well as egoistic passion and unruly behavior. They should come pure-hearted, harmless, meek servants of Allah, and no poisonous germ should flourish in their being. This is the first step in a long series of steps that will influence where you go, what you will be like in the future. Now that you have accepted Islam, this is the first day of the rest of your new life. What comes out of it is up to you. Ahmadiyat zindabad